and people have to decide. There are thousands of militias now in America who are armed to the teeth. They are angry with their government. And that's why you and I will always be um, listened to and even plotted against because when you have a voice of truth, it's not that you are radicalizing people with the truth, but the people are being radicalized when they know the truth of America's evil toward the little people. The situation in Oregon with the Bundys and the Hammonds that could degenerate into something very violent is a sign. What happened in Waco is a sign. The American people deserve a government that is truly of the people, by the people, and for the people. They don't have that kind of government as we speak. I hear Mr. Trump and other white Americans say, we must take our country back. And my question, Mr. Jones, take it back from whom? That was my next question. You were, you, <laughs> you were, you were alluding to the Federal Reserve you've been a big critic of for, yes. for 40, 50 years. Can you speak specifically to the Federal Reserve? You talked about Congress taking its power to print and coin the money back. I, in fact, we'll play a clip here where the former Federal Reserve chairman on Lair News Hour says, oh, the government has no control over us. We run the government. We're above the law. No one can question us. I, I mean, that, that is such an incredible statement. I mean, that's the real rulers right there, in my view. If what should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a president of the United States? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. Arrogance says that they don't even want to hide their deceit anymore. They boldly declare, we run this. And for the American people to think that a black man in the White House has taken over this country, you know, that is so far from the truth because he's just the CEO of USA Inc. And they can either hire him or fire him for the job that he's doing. But he's not in control. Did you know that it was John Kennedy who recognized that there was a shadow government I spoke about this in my broadcast on the time and what must be done. Kennedy said, we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. 
No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. This is why John Kennedy was killed. He understood the conspiracy. And as far back as the founding fathers of this nation, they knew that there would be those who would try to take over the um, set up, a, a, what do you call the, uh, the Bank of America. Private Central Bank. A private central bank. And they were told to guard against that. And under Woodrow Wilson in 1913, the guard left. One of the Rockefellers met on Jekyll Island with Paul Warburg and his brother, who were from the Rothschilds. They wanted to set up like the five uh, children of Rothschild Senior, the Bank of Italy, the Bank of Austria, the Bank of France, the Bank of England, all started by the banking family. Well, who cares who the politicians are Mr. Rothschild said, as long as they control the wealth. So they bankrolled both sides of a conflict and ended up ruling both sides. This is where we are today. But uh, Mr. Jones, I tell you, no matter how hard the schemers plan to destroy the good that can come to the people with proper governance. They are losing and they will lose because they have set a trap, but they're getting caught in their own trap. The American people are waking up. The masses all over the earth are beginning to rise. And that's why Zbigniew Brzezinski said, at one time, it was easier to control a million people than to kill a million people. Today, with the awakening of the masses, Zbigniew Brzezinski said, we're losing control of the masses, so it is easier today to kill a million people than to control. So all kinds of schemes are developing to kill mass populations. And you may have heard uh, us say that um, the gentleman that was the uh, Secretary of State under Nixon, Mr. Kissinger, developed this memo called Memo 200, in which he said that two billion people on this earth had to be um, culled because the resources of the earth are getting shorter, the population getting more, so we got to kill billions of people. And it's going on as we speak. You call them the pharmaceutical companies? Who goes against them? Nobody. Who goes against the gun lobby? Nobody. They don't have the power to change it. It's not that the American people shouldn't have guns. That's what the Constitution declares. We as Muslims, our leader told us no weapons, not even as much as a pen knife, because in our homes, the nation of Islam has taught hundreds of thousands of people. And in the nation, you never hear Muslim killing Muslim in an argument. Because we are taught that it's the truth that settles all arguments. So we don't have a gun to reach for or a knife to reach for. We reach for our intelligence and we argue over the truth. What is the truth? And if the truth is from my wife and it condemns an action of mine, I have to bow down to the truth. I can't 
raise my fist and strike her because it's against our law. I agree with you that free speech and liberation trumps violence. The problem is when an outside group comes who isn't going to listen to what you're having to say, then you have a right to defend yourself, but, but, but separately because that's one of my main questions and I've got to get to it with you. Sure. And then you just started getting into it before I even asked it. And this is an amazing interview because you're just following where I was going to go without me even asking the question, so it's amazing. But eugenics, yes, 1,100 people get shot by the police every year and killed. In some cases, in some cases, in fact, in a lot of cases, uh, it's in the wrong. Sometimes bad officers get away with it. I've written books on the subject. I've criticized it. I'm the guy that you know tried to expose the police state. But the police are only one small part of the police state. And for me, it becomes a scapegoat. We just make it about them and then project what bad officers do on other officers. And then I look separately at how they used hatred of police in Ukraine, George Soros did, to just now overthrow that government, not to empower the people, it was an elected government, but to create an even bigger crisis. So I see more than a million black people aborted every year uh, on average. In some states, more than half the abortions are wonderful, beautiful black babies. And I don't hear a word about this from the liberal black leaders, the white black leaders, or any of them. I know you speak about it. And so I kind of measure it. You got a million dead black people over here, chopped up babies. We know they're innocent. You can even watch some of the sonogram videos where they're fighting the scalpel with their hands and their feet. I don't care what color the baby is. They fight for their lives because they're red-blooded. And then over here, I've got 1,100 dead people. Maybe a thousand of them are black. Let's say all thousand of them were murdered in cold blood. The system's telling me to get upset about that all day and make that my main focus. When over here, I've got a million dead black people and millions of dead white people and millions of dead other human beings. I think the greatest sin in the world is bringing children into the world. Delinquents, prisoners, all sorts of things just mock when they're born. And then I read Margaret Sanger going, we're going to pose as liberals. We're going to go into these black communities. We're going to buy off their preachers. We're going to get control of them. And we're going to get them in these big cities. And I look at the big liberal cities where they've taken the guns from the black people, where they've shipped the drugs in, where they've got the Planned Parenthood on every corner. And I tell you, growing up around conservatives, libertarians, I never heard racist talk in Dallas, Texas. When I started hearing the racist talk was when I would get around liberals and Democrats and people when I was in college and when I was getting politically involved, I'd have white liberals and black liberals come up to me and they say, nobody wants these trashy black scum and if you want them, you take them. And I'm going to tell you right now, that's where I've heard the racism. That's where I've heard the sneakiness. And if you want to know where the white devils are, Minister Louis Farrakhan, I can tell you right now they run the Democratic Party 100% and they've got black people in their web murdering your people and they love it and they think that people don't see them while well, I see them and I know who they are. And I don't care what color a baby is. My soul won't allow me to hate somebody because of what color they are because I know I'll be destroyed if I ever go that direction. And so that's where I stand. That's why I wanted to have this meeting with you because you already tell people a lot of great things and I know you meet, reach tens of millions. But if you, of which you've already done, magnified, exposing what's in the vaccines, they've caught them in Africa and India with the sterilants, you know that. If you expose the abortion, which I know you do, and said, you know what, somebody kills you and gets away with it, they need to be dealt with, I agree. Well, what about what's going on in these abortuaries? What about Planned Parenthood? What about what's happening there? Thank you so much. When the government made abortion legal and we have degenerated as a society that we want pleasure but not responsibility. So the society is being herded like animals into sexual oblivion where sex is the order of the day and now you find it being practiced by kindergarten students where they've seen their parents or they turn on the television. This television, I was on, you know, a Calypso singer. I used to sing and, and I would move my body in a sensuous kind of way. But when I was on television, they would show me from here up. 
they would not allow at that